My illusion, like every other person who goes into medicine, is you have these romantic notions, Marcus Belby and all the old heroes. In fact, I've been asked quite often how many lives I've saved, and I can't really say I've saved any. I think I've helped some people. We left Germany because of the Nazis and immigrated. That's when my mother and I went together. My father went underground. Years before I started my studies, there had been articles about uncooperative patients, but they always blamed the patient. And I began to realize it was neither the patient, nor the disease, nor the particular treatment, but that the roots of the problem lay in the doctor-patient relationship. I think I had this notion that as a girl, and I was a girl, you wouldn't think so now. Well, I graduated from Hopkins when I was 23, but I wanted to show the guys that I could do everything they did. I wanted probably to show the world that I could do everything. She chose to be a proponent of communication at a time when people really dismissed it as sort of frivolous and soft and touchy-feely. Medical community is a very tough community. They all thought we relate fine to our patients. What is this lady doctor doing, sentimental lady doctor? I know for sure when she started talking about communication, everybody thought, you know, hmm. It, it, you know, <laughs> she went from nut to guru because she never changed her message. And of course, our big allies at that time were the students. This was the 60s, the days of the hippies, so I had to have evidence. So I gathered evidence. Tell you what, would you make me a promise? No. Two promises. Okay. One is that you'll stop smoking. Hmm? <laughs> no. Although she was a doctor, she was seen as being anti-doctor in some ways because she was, she was finding fault with the way that doctors did certain things. They said, you know, we went through all that and we turned out fine. And why, why do they have to be such softies and such weaklings? Look at us, we turned out great. And of course, our message, which was not very welcome, was no, we didn't turn out so great. And that's, and that's really shitty for, for a patient, like I mean, for say a, say a person who's dying, like they have a doctor who, who's been in practice for 40 years or something, who's never really dealt with his feelings about that. Patient care actually suffers from this dehumanization.